Hey what's up everybody, Stemrack35 here, back with a new video for you guys. Lately, people have been talking about why everybody seems to be spending more time playing older games over newer ones, so I decided to hop in on it and discuss the reasons, at least for me, why I spend more time playing older games over newer ones. One big reason why I stick mainly to older games is, I liked how games from back in the day didn't used to hold your hand so much, like games from the 90s, the 2000s, and even to the mid 2000s actually had you figure out how to solve something or figure out where to go on your own and maybe they would give you little hints and things like that but they never just outright told you or guided you straight to where you needed to go and yeah not all games did it right you know some games definitely had some questionable design choices or didn't do a good job of giving the player the ideas or the clues of what to do next so not every game from back then was perfect in that regard but I really appreciate it when those games just gave me the opportunity to figure out something for myself. And depending on the circumstances, I can figure it out on my own. And I really like the satisfaction of figuring things out on my own without any help or anything like that. Or sometimes if I'm really, really stuck and I feel like I've tried and exhausted every option I can possibly think of, then I'll resort to a guide to help me out. But I only use guides as a last resort. But at least older games give me the option to do that. Modern games today just give you an arrow or a glowing line that leads you directly to where you're supposed to go. Or, the worst example in my opinion, the character itself starts talking and already giving ideas and solutions about how to solve whatever puzzle you're in or something like that or where they might need to go next. That's a really annoying to me when a game's character does that. But yes, from the game's perspective, we both just discovered this puzzle at the same time but the character already has an idea of what they should probably do like five seconds after looking over the puzzle. Great. Thanks for letting me sit there and try to come to that conclusion myself, video game. Really appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, the increase of hand-holding and guiding in games these days can be quite annoying to, at times. And, and another reason is that so many modern games these days seem to release broken, unfinished, or just in a straight-up half-assed state anymore. Like why would I pay $70 for a game just for it to be broken or unfinished and then you gotta sit there and wait who knows how long for it to be patched up to the point where the game is actually fun and playable. Now don't get me wrong, right? There were a fair bit of broken glitchy games back then too, you know, that's another thing games back then weren't perfect on. There was, there was broken uh, games back then too. But the difference is, back then you had to make sure the game was as bug free and complete as possible because you didn't have the ability to just patch a game that easily, at least you know in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s of the gaming era. So if bugs slipped through the cracks, and if they were really bad bugs, they're really game breaking bugs, that could potentially kill the game slash studio that made it. So they had to be on top of making sure that the game was as bug free as possible and feature complete as possible before releasing it. Like yeah, some bugs inevitably slip through the cracks. I mean, it's software. That's going to happen. No game is ever 100% bug free. That, that's just, that just doesn't happen realistically. But you really had to make sure your game was as solid as possible upon release back then. There really wasn't much of a second chance. Unless your game sold well enough to be a greatest hits and then you could have released an updated version of the game from the greatest hits release and which that did happen in some games from time to time if a game sold well enough it and it got a greatest hits release it would get an updated version with new code and patches and ironed out bugs and stuff that did happen too. It did happen for some games too back then, but you know that that wasn't a very that wasn't a really frequent frequent thing. Not every single game got that opportunity to do something like that. And another thing to add on to that is the constant nickel and diming AAA games seem to do nowadays. It's like every game that releases now has to have a season pass or a battle pass or an in-game shop or something like that. Even a few single-player games have fallen victim to that last one. It sucks to pay $70 for a game and then they have the audacity to ask more money from you through some sort of microtransaction or something. And then some people go and say, oh, well, it's only a couple of bucks. But then you start buying a $4 skin here, an $8 character there. You don't even have to buy every single thing that's in the in-game store. And all those little purchases here and there will add up over time. Like you take into account the $70 price tag for games now, the tax you gotta pay on top of that, and then whatever little microtransactions or battle pass or season pass or whatever you end up uh you, you end up buying for the game too. And by that point you end up paying well 
into or well over a hundred dollars for a single game and that's just assuming you bought the regular standard edition of the game let's not look at those prices if you decided to buy like a deluxe edition or a special slash collector's edition at, at, at that rate no i just miss the times where you could just pay the standard single price for a game and get everything that was meant to have with it you know you didn't have to then separately buy a battle pass or buy some microtransactions in the in-game store to get extra content out of it. Heck, I miss the times when you had to complete feats or challenges or something like that in the game itself to unlock whatever extra costumes or features. They don't, they didn't leave them out of the game's release and then sell it back to you later or anything like that. I mean, hell, even Tekken 8 fell victim to this recently, which, co which coincidentally isn't the first game this has happened to. You guys remember the Crash Team Racing remake? The game came out, had great reviews, and people really liked it. Then a few weeks or a month later, or however long it was, they then slipped in a whole in-game store with microtransactions. It's just freaking scummy. And between that and Tekken 8, I feel like that is just what a lot more and more companies are going to do um, down the line. It's just this type of business practice now. They'll release the game, let the reviews and word of mouth spread about the game. Then like a month or two down later down the line, they'll slide in the in-game store with microtransactions. And by that point, most people have already bought the game and the initial good word of mouth is already out there. It's shameful, bro. <laughs> good lord, the greed is shameful. You know, this kind of makes me think of the, about this thing, the saying they used to have back then. Back then in the gaming industry, they used to have this saying called save it for the sequel where if they couldn't get a feature working in the current game or if they didn't have the time to ex to implement a feature or something like that, they'd usually just cut it and save it and put it into the next installment of the game if the game sold well enough to warrant getting a sequel. But nowadays, it feels like these companies just say save it for the DLC or save it for the season pass or, or the battle pass now. Also, another thing I like about playing older games these days is that it invokes the feelings of how the game industry used to be around that time. Specifically, I'm talking about the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube era. If you want an idea for what I'm talking about, like if you didn't really grow up in that era, you weren't really around for that era, you want a general kind of idea of what I'm talking about, you know, go look up uh, commercials of games from that era. Go read through some different gaming magazines from that era. It's just that spirit and that energy of how the industry and gaming itself was back then. I just miss it all so much. Like, it's, it's like the industry was just having fun be with being itself then. Gaming was just seemed more chill and no Fs given and just more willing to do stuff for fun or because they thought it might be cool. I mean, gaming was still, you know, a business back then, but it's like they were able to, you know, be a little more... Uh, be a little more lenient and flexible with said business aspect of gaming back then or something like that and with the way this game industry is now yeah those days ain't coming back sadly <laughs> uh, those days are gone un unfortunately and then you know you got all this drama going on with gaming these days and it's just man I, I miss how gaming used to be like like living through the sixth gen was an amazing time for gaming my absolute favorite era you know what? I've been saying this to myself for quite a few years now, but these days I really feel like gaming got too popular. Video games got too damn mainstream and too popular, and then all this stuff going on now is just like seeming to be the end result of it. It's like gaming kind of lost its identity it used to have when it was more like niche and underground. And now that's become mainstream, all this, you know, the identity it had before that, it's like, it's like frowned upon now, or you, you can't go back to that anymore. And that's really unfortunate. I, I hate that. And, you know, whenever I see other videos of people talking about this subject, I'll sometimes, you know, look in the comment section and see a comment where someone says something like, oh, it's just nostalgia. You know, we just enjoyed games a lot more back then because we were kids or, you know, something along those lines. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen some comments like that yourself if you watch videos regarding this topic. And I got to disagree with that, at least for me personally. It's not about the nostalgia. Like, a lot of these older games that you see me buy and stuff like that, I've never played them before. And, like, sure, I may have seen them, seen some of these games in either on a, on TV or in a magazine or something somewhere like that at some point. 
but most I've but most of these games I've never personally experienced firsthand myself before. So I have no memories or emotional attachment to some of these games, and I'm still trying to work my way through my backlog of games I've built up over the years, but for the most part I legitimately enjoy playing these games, at least the ones I've managed to play so far. I genuinely have a lot of fun playing these older games, and I have more desire and more urge to play these older games over a lot of the newer releases that come out these days. And the big reason why is that, like I said earlier, I miss the old school style of game design from, from back then where like the game didn't hold heavily hold your hand throughout it and it wasn't afraid to challenge the player either matter of fact i missed those kinds of games to where like they didn't even have difficulty levels like the game was just designed the way it was and if it was challenging that's just how the game was and the only way to beat that game was to sit there and just overcome the challenge that the developers have presented it was either you beat the game or you just didn't. <laughs> it was either those two options. And like, I just, I just legit miss games with that just straight challenge like that. Like, sure, not every game needs to be that way. You know, it's not, not every game needs to be really challenging. Whatever, that's fine if a game isn't. But I do wish we had more games that were designed like that, or had that more kind of old school mentality of game design philosophy, other than just like you know the Souls games. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Souls games are good games and all, but I want other kinds of games that aren't Souls-like or designed with Souls in mind in order to, you know, or just made in like a different style from Souls, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, for me, it's not nostalgia. I really find myself having more fun playing these older games than a lot of the newer ones come out. And I've I kind of always felt like that. Like, sure, maybe a little bit was, maybe a little bit of it is, is nostalgia too, to, to a degree. But the, the the big driving force for me is it's not nostalgia. I legitimately want to play these older games. No nostalgia whatsoever. And another point is I feel like these older games were more respect for the player's time too. And by that, I mean not every single game back then felt like it needed to be 80 to 100 hours long in order for people to play it. So many games, at least AAA games these days, feel like they have to be massively open, bloated with near endless filler content to pad out the game's time and get people's playtime as close to 100 plus hours as possible. And games that are like that are, is just a big turnoff for me at this point anymore. And one of the reasons for that is, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but for me at least, I just don't have the same time, the same amount of time to play games as much anymore as I used to. You know, so I really appreciate a game that I can sit down and play through and complete it in a few sessions in a reasonable amount of time. Like for me, the perfect length for a game is around, I'd say about, you know, 20, 25 hours. Uh, heck, even maybe even a little shorter, you know, a game can be under 20 hours too and I'll still, you know, enjoy it as long as the game itself was fun and stuff too. But, uh, these days, I like really nice and concise and more compact games. And honestly, I've never had a problem with shorter games. I've always liked and appreciated shorter games as well as the longer ones over the years, but just these past few years lately, I really enjoy, you know, shorter games nowadays, especially since we really don't get those types of games of that length much anymore. You know, I just miss the more fine-tuned, finely crafted feel and pace of games like that. Uh, you know, outside of indies that do it. Plus, with that, you know, you don't have to worry uh, about the possibility of a game overstaying its welcome. And I think I hate that the most when it comes to playing a game is, you know, I begin to feel like the game is overstaying its welcome and it just won't end. I just start to get really tired of the game and start wanting it to end more and more as time goes on, but it just feels like it isn't, it's just going on and on. And I start not having fun with the game anymore at that point. It feels like I'm not having fun with the game anymore at that point once that feeling starts to set in for me. And then I'm in a dilemma because I already put this much amount of time into the game. And I don't like not finishing things I've started, and I always like to see stuff through to the end. But at the same time, it just feels like the game is becoming a drag, and I'm just like forcing myself to see it to the end at that point. And if that's how you end up viewing a game that you're playing, is it even worth? Is it even fun anymore? Like, is it even worth playing if you stopped enjoying yourself? And don't get me wrong, you know, you had your fair share of lengthier games back then too, also. No, but those are mostly re regulated to certain genres like RPG, JRPGs, and uh, MMOs. But if you play something like a 3D platformer or a racing game or a shooter campaign or something like that, they typically didn't take very long to finish. 
I just feel like older games just had to be a lot more conservative with their game length and content back then because the consoles of the time could only do but so much and the devs had to carefully plan out what they were going to do with their game and we really don't see that much anymore outside of you know indie games that are still made um designed like that and, and big ups to the indie games that still do that <laughs> And also to add on to that, I feel like older games have better replayability to them because of that too. Partly because, you know, they were shorter so you had more incentive to, to dive back in and replay them again to unlock more things or play around with some of the stuff you unlocked during your first playthrough or if you just really enjoyed the game that much and you wanted to hop back in and play it again. But some of these modern games that come out today are so long that by the time I finish them, I don't even have much desire to go back and replay them again. At least not right away. And another thing, I honestly feel like even to this day, older games offer more unique experiences than modern games today. Like, I like to watch a lot of videos about retro and obscure games, and I also like to read about obscure retro games too. Like, most of my time spent on the internet looking at or reading things about video games is mostly spent on just retro or in old obscure uh, games and from some of the games i've seen and heard of from you know just doing research or just looking up and just looking into all these old games and stuff like that there are some games out there that to this day still have a really unique design either their design or style or presentation is just still really unique even to this day like, I've seen some games that have whole unique mechanics that you don't really see in games made today. In a world that just seems like a sea of constant remakes, remasters, re-releases, and sequels these days. Going back and finding out about some of these more obscure games I've never even heard of before. It's kind of like a breath of fresh air. It's like, wow, this is something I've never even seen or heard of before. I piques my interest as to what this is, or at least, you know, wanted to know more about it. And to tie this long rant video off, whenever this conversation about enjoying or playing older games more than newer ones comes up, some people will say, oh, you know, you, you've just gotten older, you just don't enjoy the hobby as much as you used to anymore. And for me, that's just not true. I mean, have you seen my game collection and the games I buy? My career choice? <laughs> <laughs> I still love gaming as much as I did when I played them when I was a, a, a little kid. It's just that a lot of certain aspects about modern gaming and the way modern gaming seems to be heading is why I've just lost interest in a lot of newer games these days, you know, unless they're indie games that look cool, you know, I'll, I'll always uh, uh, play some of those. So I still love video games and gaming, just not modern gaming, or at least modern AAA gaming. So that's pretty much all I play these days, is just retro games, games I got in my backlog, and indies. But anyway, long behind rant video over on why I pre why I personally play more older games over newer ones. So what are your guys' thoughts? Do you guys too find yourselves in playing and enjoying older games more than newer ones? That's not to say I don't play newer games, and there's still some new games out there that I buy and like and want to play, like, you know, Tekken 8, I bought that. I'm looking forward to Stellar, the Stellar Blade. Last year, I enjoyed and bought um, Hogwarts Legacy, so there's still some new modern games that come out that I like and play and stuff. It's just that number that I buy every year is just dwindling more and more. I can easily count on one hand the number of, like, new modern games I buy in these days. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, what about you guys? Do you, like I said, you guys find yourselves enjoying older games more or newer games or, you know, what is it? What are your guys' thoughts on this uh, topic that's been uh, discussed a lot lately? But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm Stemmer35. I'm out. Please don't forget to rate and comment on what you guys' thoughts are and subscribe. Peace.